NASA Artemis was a creation under the Trump administration, but it was one of the few programs that survived the transition of power. In 2021, Biden's NASA selected SpaceX to develop the company's next-generation rocket called Starship as a lunar lander for Artemis. The agency awarded the company $2,941,394,557 U.S. dollars to turn Starship into a vehicle that can transport humans to and from the lunar surface. After more than a year of awarding the contract up to this point, the agency fully believes in its right decision. More importantly, after two times visiting Starbase, NASA Artemis teams officially confirmed that SpaceX is outclassing NASA in all aspects. Why can SpaceX do this paradoxical thing? Let's find out today in this episode of Alpha Tech Channel. First impressions of SpaceX state-of-the-art infrastructure spotted on its first visit late last year. NASA recently visited SpaceX for a first-hand look at a prototype of the human lander that will ferry NASA Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface during Artemis 3. This demonstration will lay the foundation for a long-term human presence at the moon later this decade, the agency announced via Twitter on December 21st. Talking about Starbase launch site, Canadian Space Agency astronaut and pilot Joshua Kutrick shared an aerial photograph of the Starbase launch site. At the start of 2021, Starbase's lone orbital launch site was effectively a dirt lot and a fraction of the launch mount, the latter constructed well in advance of the rest of the pad. Less than a year later, a dramatic change is looming. The orbital launch site, including a skyscraper-sized launch tower, three massive arms, perhaps the most complex launch mount in spacecraft history, and the largest cryogenic tank farm ever built for a rocket, is on the verge of completion. This certainly got the Artemis team thinking about how NASA spent a decade and almost a billion dollars on a single launch tower. Not to mention the present time, SpaceX has continued to complete the second launch tower in Florida. In contrast, NASA's second mobile launcher is too heavy, years late, and pushing a billion dollars. What a huge difference. On the same day, Canadian Space Agency astronaut and pilot Joshua Kutrick shared an aerial photograph of the Starbase launch site. Flying in the skies above Boca Chica this morning with NASA astronaut Jasmin Mobelli, dreaming of a future when ships full of humans may leave from this beach for Mars. Look closely, you can see a starship, he wrote in a tweet. NASA astronaut Victor Glover, who flew aboard SpaceX's Crew-1 mission at the International Space Station, is also an Artemis astronaut. He visited the Starbase rocket factory as well. It was truly a speechless moment. Starship launch hardware stands tall at SpaceX, while NASA HLS experts Randy Bresnik and Victor Glover take a first-hand look. A Starship will land NASA Artemis astronauts on the moon during Artemis 3 after NASA Space Launch System and NASA Orion deliver the crew to lunar orbit. The agency captioned another photograph. It was truly a speechless moment for the Artemis team. Almost half a year later, last month, the team returned to Starbase once again. But everything seems to have completely changed before their eyes. Starship is now definitely more powerful and promising than the last time around. SpaceX has completely amazed the NASA Artemis team. Mark Kirasik, the NASA Deputy Associate Administrator for the Artemis Campaign Development Division, also tweeted, On my recent visit to SpaceX in Boca Chica, Texas, I had the chance to visit the Super Heavy Booster slated to make its first orbital test flight later this year, and the engines that will be used on Starship, the human landing system for Artemis 3. Very exciting, he adds. Most impressively, we have this amazing close-up picture inside of one of Starbase's build site tents. NASA engineers were examining the massive Starship Raptor V2 engines. They shared, for the first time, we see Raptors 2 empty. The Raptor 2 engine looks cleaner, with fewer pipes, which means fewer leaks. Interestingly, these two NASA gentlemen are wearing SpaceX safety helmets, but from the look on their faces, a lot is going on in their minds. Well, maybe these guys from a NASA contractor working with SLS can't believe that SpaceX has redesigned, built, tested, and about to install this R2 engine in under two years from concept. They've never heard of something going from blueprint to full mock-up in such a short time period. And they can't believe that an engine this small is more powerful than SLS RS-25S. Or, my God, this may actually work! 
Now, I really can't wait to see Raptor version 3 next year. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think they're thinking. The NASA teams are then seen in front of Booster 7 at the Mega Bay. You know, at just under 100 meters in height, SLS is a massive launch vehicle. Though it's smaller than SpaceX's full-stack Starship attached to a booster, which measures 120 meters. On the same day, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk shared a picture of the 33 integrated engines, each of which he claimed would produce a whopping 203 metric tons of force. So the NASA team has definitely been to see this magnificent scene with their own eyes. Musk called this his Mars Colonial Transporter and replied in the tweet of Everyday Astronaut, I can't wait to hear the rumble of a rocket that's over twice as powerful as the Saturn V. Indeed, with 39 Raptors installed, SpaceX Starship is the rocket with the most engines in history. SLS will produce 9.5 million pounds of thrust and carry a payload capacity of 190,000 pounds or 86 tons up to low Earth orbit, LEO, while Starship will produce 17 million pounds of thrust and be able to launch 300,000 pounds or 150 tons. On top of that, Starship will do it at a fraction of the cost due to its reusability. That is the biggest advantage of Starship. Along with the Raptor, the tour also shared the picture of the grid fins of the rocket's Super Heavy booster. We can realize this is the latest design of grid fins. According to Everyday Astronaut videos, Elon said they had shrunk the grid fins significantly from where they started out. On June 1st, SpaceX began installing the first grid fin on Super Heavy B7, further indicating the company's growing confidence in the booster. The rocket will be equipped with four grid fins located at the top used to guide the vehicle when it returns from space. However, the number of grid fins will be changed in the near future. They're much lighter. We obviously don't need four. I think we could probably get away with two, definitely no more than three. SpaceX has really made great technological strides, and all of this has not only made NASA Artemis teams, but the whole world admire them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas right there in the comment section. Everyone's support is the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.